Good morning! So, it's January now? Is it February? It's February 1st today. Ugh, shows how long I've been on holiday. I have finished my computer engineering degree. My graduation is on the 12th of May. I've got that beautiful, complied with all other required uh, shit uh, email, so I can go and get a job now and I can go out into the big bad world. But it was a wild ride and today I just want to discuss um, some of the pros and cons of computer engineering at the University of Pretoria. Um, like a review of, of every single module that we did during the degree, whether I would recommend it to other people, and whether I would do it all again. And spoiler alert, I definitely would. The skills and the critical uh, thinking that I learned during the degree and the ability to learn other more complicated things, I think was totally worth it. I, in matric, was much better at languages and much better at uh, soft skills and that than hard mathematical skills. And so, you know, my English, my soft skills, those things were good, but my critical thinking skills, my problem solving skills, my mathematical skills weren't as good as those other ones. And now after the degree, I feel like they've been brought much more up to speed with them. And I feel like I'm a much more well-rounded person and capable really of learning anything. Like if before the degree you had told me that I could, uh, you know, go and teach myself these advanced calculus concepts and really like if I wanted to go out and learn nuclear physics one day, I'd be like, nah, no ways, brother, I'm not good at maths. But now that I've finished the degree, I'm pretty confident in my ability to learn anything. Not everything, because my you know, brain only has a fine amount of capacity, but definitely anything. If I had to put my mind to it using the self-study skills and the mathematical um, background that I picked up during computer engineering, I think I could learn anything, whether it be orbital mechanics, nuclear physics, anything. And so for that reason and that reason alone, um, Compenge is probably worth it. And then on top of that, all the um, industry applicable skills uh, like coding, you know, data structures and algorithms, all the mathematical basis, all the electronics that I've learned, all of the um, engineering management skills, all of that is just like a cherry on top and definitely be worth it. If you told me in matric how much maths there was in computer engineering, I think I might not have picked the degree and so I'm glad that I actually was kind of naive in grade 11 in matric and kind of just got shoved into computer engineering. Well, not shoved in, I went and saw a career guidance counselor and he suggested it as one of my options. Um, and I was always interested in computers, so I was like, yeah, oh, why not? Some of my friends that went to Varsity well ahead of time for EBIT week and they researched the Varsities and they went there uh, ahead of time and say, so, yeah, I'm kind of lucky in that regard. So computer engineering at Tux would definitely recommend. The differences between computer engineering and computer science are manifold. I actually made a whole video about them, but computer science is far more software based and computer engineering is far more software and hardware and electronics and engineering based which I think is more valuable in the long run. You both end up going working in the same kind of jobs though. You go work in a software development uh, or software uh, engineer position at any of the tech companies in South Africa. That's kind of what all my friends who finished the company's degree are doing because that's where the money and the interest and the skills are needed right now. And uh, yeah, so you kind of end up in the same position at the end. But I think the uh, career path, career trajectory you set yourself up with, with computer engineering is far more varied. You can do embedded systems development. You can go work on uh, kind of big industrial plants and that because you have the mechanical and um, electrical knowledge that ComScience doesn't. But whatever, this is not a video about that. As I said, watch my other video. This is a video reviewing computer engineering. So my degree took me five years to get done. It's a four-year degree, but I had to take an extra year to finish some mod to redo some modules that I failed and then do the modules that I hadn't done because I was redoing other modules. It's kind of standard. Um, very few people actually finish the degree in four years. Of the 200 of us that started in first year, I think about 20 people finished it in four years and then more people finished it in five years with me, more people are still finishing it this year and actually when I did project I learned that there was quite a lot of people in electrical, electronic and computer engineering doing five, six, seven, even eight years um, to finish their degree. So, you know, five years is not too bad and as long as you get the degree at the end of the day, that's what counts. But now I want to go through and actually look at every single module that I did during the degree and talk about it and talk about if it was um, a good module, a bad module, if I think it was worth it and what like the curriculum as a whole contains um, during computer engineering. So let's turn over this side and have a look. So here we go. This is actually my academic record, my academic transcript. So you can see all the marks that I got for every single subject in my degree. Bit of a exposing myself here, but I feel like it's really valuable for people to see this. So let's go ahead and have a look. So in first year, I did a normal first year, um, and so I did all of the modules required of me. This includes uh, op COS 122, operating systems, COS 132, that's just basic programming, and then in second semester, I think it was, there was another COS module, yeah, it was COS 110, program design. The COS modules were good. Um, as any computer science student will tell you, using Fitchfork, which is like the automated grading system, is really shit and doesn't really give you a good 
um, indication of how well you actually know the content. It's more just can you like pass, can you write your code in a way that it passes the, the grading software. So that was a bit shit, but I enjoyed all the COS modules. UPO, that was academic orientation. I think that was just some nonsense we did in the first week of varsity. Uh, EBN, electricity and electronics, that was kind of tough. Um, that was my first wake up call for varsity that like this isn't a, you know, this isn't an easy game. And uh, it was basically basic circuits and that, and not that hard in the grand scheme of varsity, but because like getting thrown straight in from a trick and that I suffered, I think I got like 12% or something for the first semester test and then really had to pick up my game and eventually pass it. So that was quite hard. And I actually found the, the uh, electronics and circuits course a year later in second year easier than this one. Uh, just because this one had a lot of KCL and KVL um, voltage and circuit equations that were kind of hard for my fledgling metric brain to understand. And so yeah, that was that was a fun time. EIW, Information Technology Practice. I think that was the uh, one of the holiday modules, the Cisco certification courses that we did, which, spoiler alert, weren't that useful in my opinion. I think we did four of them throughout the degree, first year, second year, and then beginning of third year, end of third year. And they were like Cisco networking certification courses, learning how to use the routers that they had on campus in the Cisco labs, learning how to set up big mesh networks, all complicated under the hood uh, server things. Maybe like practical if you're gonna go and be a network engineer, but in the days, day and age of AWS and Azure and GCP, I think it was kind of a waste of time and could have been spent better spent doing other things. And it was like a, an attendance only course. So you just had to like pass the little test um, during the week or Lots of online tests that you could kind of just cheat your way through, um, and then like the final demonstration, the final implementation thing, like you could kind of read your um, read your notes and that from your text. You, you, it was open book test. You could read your notes from the textbook and then eventually just like wire the things together and kind of get it right. And if you failed, it was a sub which you could easily pass. And so yeah, not the greatest in my opinion. But anyway, SWK mechanics that was hard. You can see I got fifty here because I only passed in the sub. Um, Lots of people throughout all the engineering degrees fail SWK in mechanics because it's just basic physics and once again it's like you make one tiny mistake where you leave off one number you get zero out of 20 for the whole question as opposed to like two three four you know like if you'd had method marks so that's why that subject is really tough and the lecturer oh, wasn't a nice person um so yeah SWK is hard and a lot of engineers will tell you SWK is one to watch out for WTW 164, that's one of the um, first maths courses. I think that was the second semester maths course. That was okay, 61, I think I did okay. Physics, FSK, 60, yeah, that was also okay. Basically a lot of the metric physics, but um, uh, in a new format and with much more mathematical basis to it. Calculus 158, that's the first maths course you do at Varsity. Introduction to Calculus, I did quite well in that because it's still kind of easy, but I think it like, goes through all of the AP Maths syllabus in you know like two or three months of Varsity and then you're all caught up. Um, but AP Maths was, uh, but uh, I didn't do AP Maths by the way, but 158 WTW was good. And in second year, the WTWs are what uh, shaft most people. So doing well in that is essential for Compenge. Um, and then HAS 110 and HAS 120, those are just the humanities and social sciences course we do. It's just a little bit of essay writing. Engineers hate it, but it's easy, like don't stress about it. And then EMR 101, introduction to laboratory measurements and computer simulations. I think that was another holiday module, which was pretty simple. So yeah, I did well in first year. Um, despite the like big change from school and that. And yeah, the first year you can see it's, it's a real basic um, introduction course. So you do your basic mathematics, you do your basic calculus, you do your basic mechanics, basic physics, and then you uh, basic computer science, and then you start building on that and specializing as the years go on. A lot of these courses are taken by all the engineers. And then later on in the degree, we diverge and do different things. So moving on to second year. Second year was where I had a bit of an all fall down and I really failed a couple of modules, so anyway. Uh, EJJ, that was uh, professional and technical communication. I think just how to like communicate properly as an engineer. It was very boring, uh, but very easy. BES, engineering stats. That was easy, really enjoyed it, interesting. COS 212, that's a na nasty one. Data structures and algorithms. I got 52 for it, but I, yo, uh, the assignments took me for a ride because just as I, was, as I was saying with Fitchfork earlier, you know, you work on this 120 mark assignment for literally three days straight get two out of 120 for the mark because your code fails and it doesn't reach all the other tests. So yeah, really shitty module, really interesting data structures and algorithms, heaps, hash tables, queues, all the kind of important data structures that are used in computer science, but just really a really nasty way of testing in the, in the subject and not a nice course um, to try and pass. I've managed to pass it first time, but a lot of people struggle with it and a lot of people have to redo it. And also it was in a semester with a lot of other busy things um, which was why I really struggled with it that semester. EIR, Electrical Engineering, that was the, um, uh, the, pre the sequel to EBN, which I talked about. More circuits, math, circuits equation, uh, basic electronics, 
enjoyed that as well, but easier than the previous one. Information technology, that's the other Cisco certification course. Oh no, ELI, what was ERR? Oh no, sorry, I lied. ERR, electrical engineering, was learning how to use um, circuitry, AND gates, NAND gates, um, physically wiring things together to form basic circuitry and to form basic decision making with VHDO and with circuit design, so that was quite good. ELI was the second uh, EBN course, or the basic circuitry in that. Uh, ERS, digital systems, no that was ERS, fuck me, I don't know what any of these modules are anymore, it was a long time ago, okay, forgive me, but I'm giving you the gist here of what the, the year contained. JCP, that's community service based project, we have to do a community service project, we ended up doing EBIT week in a, like a single long weekend, uh, where we, it's a, a program where a whole bunch of grade 11 and matric students come to the campus and see what engineering's like, so that was really good. NMC, material science, I failed that. Uh, and WCW 256 and 263, I failed those as well. That was in numerical methods and differential equations. Um, yeah, that was, that was a tough semester because I, I remember I failed three subjects just because the, the course load was too heavy and I was focusing too much on COS, like just trying to pass COS, just trying to get those assignments in and then neglecting all of my maths modules, which is not a good idea. I'd rather fail the COS module and do the maths modules because maths is so much more important for the rest of your degree. The prerequisites are so much more important. Um, I'll show you that later, the prereq. If I don't remember to show you later, I'm going to put it in here, the um, tree of all the modules throughout the degree and what is prerequisite for what else. But yeah, so I failed like all three of those, wasn't a good time, I had to redo it in the next year. And NMC, the material science, wasn't actually that hard, it's just the lectures and that were so different compared to what he tested in class. The lectures he was, uh, the lecturer went on about all these things that he's worked on in the past and just gave the like the little bit of theory in that but ne never actually touched on what he was going to test in the test and the actual equations that you were going to use. So I really struggled with that and you know should have paid more attention in the um, the what's it called, the tutorials and practicals but I didn't and I had to redo it. Uh, so that's accidentally registered for that again. So then in third year, uh, so in third year I had already at the beginning of the year decided to move to the five year program. So I was redoing some of the second year courses and some of the third year courses and not doing the full third year. So EIW, that was again a Cisco course, passed that, no problem. Maths 238, that's the second semester, last maths module we do in computer engineering. Quite tough, um, but I, I did it online and I had a lot of extra time and so I managed to crush it actually with 63. 256, differential equations from the previous year. Managed to smash that with 67, 258 calculus got 69 because basically this is when COVID happened and I had five weeks at home to just sit and I literally did my whole math syllabus in those five weeks and so then just throughout the semester it was just um, refreshing my mind about the modules and so yeah, I definitely think the quality of uh, the teaching and of the testing dropped off online but um, I, I really understood the maths well at the end of it and my mathematical basis is really strong since then. So I was great, you know, you can find the pros in the COVID pandemic, but the pro for me was I really learned how to do calculus properly, which was great. Um, engineering management, BSS, that's like a, it's not, it's actually not a module taken by the, the engineering faculty. Well, no, it is, it's done by the industrial engineering faculty, but it's how to manage big projects, it's how to do project management, it's how to do um, project scope, a whole lot of timeline, like Gantt charts, and that it was an interesting module and really easy. Um, engineering activity and group work, MIA, that was another similar module where we had uh, lots of engineering management and we had to um, learn about sustainability and uh, build, do a project together, I think. EBB, control systems, that's quite hard, quite a mathematical based electrical, electronic and computer engineering focused course where you really focus on learning how to build control systems and feedback loops and how to use electrical systems uh, to interact with the physical world with a whole lot of maths. So that was quite complicated, but managed to pass it. Did I get 55? Not bad. EMK microprocessors, 62%. I was very happy with that. That's a module that shafts a lot of people, but it's basically how to use a microprocessor and how to interact with um, circuit boards and microprocessors um, using the low level assembly language. And so that was really tough. And I was go on the way to fail it before COVID hit as well. And I sat at home and read through the whole textbook for like six weeks. And then we, EMK is usually a group project, but in my year we did it individual projects. And then I really had to sit down and actually learn how to code an assembly myself. And that's the moment when I went from being carried through a lot of modules and being carried through a lot of practicals to being the one that carries other people. Um, and yeah, EMK was a, was a good time for me at the end and I did really well and I was really happy with that. Really hard module on the theory. Uh, theory wasn't too hard, but like the tests in that were very finicky. So I'm really happy about that one. But there were years later that I passed it so well. e and &E is another one to watch out for, 310, that's analog electronics. So work, learning how filters work, learning how op amps and how to use op amps in circuits and how to build circuits to build like radios and low pass filters and band pass filters. Sounds easy, not easy in practice, actually having to build the things and get them working 
working and the complicated maths and just the finickiness of getting circuits and getting um, these low pass filters and high pass filters to work. I passed it uh, because once again the practicals were individual and at home and so I had lots of extra time to work on them and I think honestly they were a bit easier than when they were in person. Uh, well sorry, they were definitely easier because they were um, kind of more simulation based than physical building. Um, but yeah, that's actually, it also goes to show that like the year that you do a module, it can be a very different experience based on who, which lecturer is taking it and how the practicals are kind of set up. Because I know friends that did it a year later than me struggled a lot more because it was, you had to do more of the physical circuit building. So not really fair, but hey, that's the degree. Uh, and then ERD, computer engineering design. What was that? I don't remember ERD that well. Computer engineering design. I think that was another kind of using circuits and using microelectronics to design systems and... Uh, yeah, you'll have to go check the yearbook, okay, to actually see what these courses were about. I just, I do remember doing well in it and enjoying it, so that's a pass. I mean, that's a good thing. See, so yeah, I got 63% for uh, that third year that I did. My average was sitting at 62. Come around to fourth year, I'm still doing some of the third year modules and some of the fourth year modules. IPI, Engineering Professionalism, that's a lack of final year course where you have to um, learn all about the Engineering Council of South Africa and how to be a good um, professional candidate engineer. So that's cool, easy module. Practical training and reports, that's EPY. So you've got to do four weeks of VAC work in your final year as a computer engineer. I worked at a, an IoT company, just wrote a quick essay, easy module. It's a pass, attendance satisfactory module actually as well. Um, ERP, research project that you do at the end of the year. That's uh, quite a tough, you're supposed to do just that and final year project at the end of your degree. But that's a really hard uh, research project actually where they teach you how to write stuff. Like, papers properly and how to do formatting and how to follow like the engineering guidelines of South Africa. But there's, there's specific guidelines, extra attributes that engineers have to follow. Um, but it ends up actually being like a really mathematically in intensive course. We were doing Coleman filters, if I remember correctly, and just wrapping your head around the complicated mathematics and using a gyroscope and using um, SEM and the, the C language was actually really difficult. The practice were really hard as opposed to like actually learning how to do research. So doing that at the same time as final your project is tough, but I did it the previous year when I wasn't doing projects. So it was good, did well, got 60. EAS, that's Computer Engineering, Architecture and Systems. Once again, a really complicated, uh, not a really complicated, but a really involved module, learning how to use um, uh, the kind of basic um, building box, blocks of a computer like memory, RAM, CPU, compiler stuff um, to build up the different layers of abstraction that you know high level software programs can use. So basically um, emulating and learning about the basic block, building blocks of computers like caches, like memory, all of that um, and how those go into building and, uh, and uh, forming the basis of a computer system. So that was a really interesting module. Electromagnetic compatibility, that was a third year course that I was doing then instead. Basically like EM waves, electromagnetic pulses, electromagnetic um, maths, uh, signals, um, cross feed. I don't remember exactly all of the things we did, but a lot of uh, basically the, the nitty gritty maths and that of uh, sending signals over communication media and the maths that goes into transforming analog to digital signals, that sort of thing. Um, software engineering, EPE, that was a really good module, I was actually talking about it last night to a friend, that was basically how learning how um, sprints work and you know the modern software agile methodology, learning how modern software development works, learning how to use tools like Git and in a big team put a big software project together, best software practices, we built Cluedo as a game, it didn't work, that was an enjoyable project. AI, Intelligent Systems, that's a third year module. Um, that's basically introduction to artificial intelligence and machine learning. How to build neural networks, how to use um, Markov, this, uh, what are they called? Markov, Markov trees, Markov nearest, K nearest neighbors. I don't remember, as you can see, it was a long time ago. But basically an introduction to statistics, probability for machine learning, and then all the machine learning um, data structures and that that you can build in order to simulate intelligence on, on a computer. Would you be quiet, dog? I'm trying to talk here. And then EDC, that's digital communication. Oh, failed that one. That, that hurt. Um, that's basically um, a how to send, how to c convert between analog and digital signals and how to send information along a digital medium and modulate it and do all the different modulation schemes and that. Yes, I, I did this like a month and a half ago and I've already forgotten it. But using modulation and, that, and all the uh, mathematical basis behind uh, modulation to convert data in different forms to send it over um, communication media with different kind of filtering, with different kind of um, redundancy in it. Interesting module. Failed it though because I was focused on other things and then had to redo it in my fifth year. <sighs> Which brings me to my final year. Um, so I obviously had uh, finished a lot of my modules already and so I was just cleaning up the last few fourth year modules that I hadn't finished. 
So I did EHN, that's e-business and network security, really enjoyable module um, about cryptography and how uh, to secure information over the internet. We built ciphers, we built um, RES and BES, uh, and even I think, what, not FSK, what's that? SHA, SHA, um, encryption ciphers and encryption protocols, really cool module, lots of coding in Python, really enjoyed that. Um, I'm going to skip down to ESP, DSP programming and application, really complicated fourth year module, probably the, one of the harder fourth year modules um, about uh, basically how to communicate, um, sorry, basically it's digital filters, so how to encode and decode signals using an STM32 and the C programming language, and basically how to uh, implement filters on a digital uh, implementation and that, and basically just uh, learning how nitty gritty uh, signal analysis and signal manipulation happens on a, a digital basis. Quite a hard module though because the practicals were really difficult to implement uh, in C and on the STM32, which is just a bitch to work with. Um, so yeah, good good module at the end of it, but I uh, really struggled with it as a lot of other people did. And then finally, EPR project. I've talked about that enough on the channel, but basically that big final year project that counts 64 credits that you do for the whole year. And that's basically like the culmination of your degree. You have to uh, you get a, assigned a topic, you have to build out that topic, you have to do all the simulation, the theory, you actually have to build the circuitry, you have to build the implementation. Mine was the real-time hand gesture control of a virtual object in augmented reality. I made a whole video about it, but um, really enjoyable. Like, you know, fourth year is supp supposedly the most complex um, year of your degree, but it's the most enjoyable as well because you spend a lot of it working on project and working on this own system of your own that you uh, finally get to implement and build all the way from scratch and theory right to finished implementation and you get to present it and write a report on it and that's really rewarding and really enjoyable. So fourth year is technically the hardest, but it's uh, one of the more enjoyable years of the degree. Uh, most people say that third year is the most hard to get through of computer engineering just because of the amount of work, the workload, and of course the complexity of the, just the content. It's really difficult stuff. And so yeah, that's the degree. I got 76.29% for my final year, uh, our final year mark, and then so my total uh, mark for my whole degree is 65.06% which if you told me I was gonna get in matric, I would be, first of all, horrified because it'd be like, oh, such a low mark. But after like a month of varsity in first year, I would have been like 65, that's incredible, well done, Mitch. And so yeah, really happy about that. And uh, that's um, all the modules that you have to take in order to get a computer engineering degree at Tux. Here at the bottom, you can see I've complied with all the requirements and graduations on the 12th of May. So really looking forward to that. So that's basically everything that goes into a computer engineering degree at Tux. Overall, the degree is awesome and the lecturers are amazing and very, very clever, uh, amazing, accomplished individuals. It gets better the further you get in the degree. In first year, you get a lot of the junior lecturers and actually lecturers from other departments, like the maths department, who aren't that great and who hate their lives and can see they're just there to do research and they fucking hate students. And overall, you know, the attitude to students, uh, like any undergraduate course, is not great. You know, lecturers, you know, look down on you and think you're kind of a piece of scum for asking questions or for, you know, being difficult or fighting for marks and that. But, you know, when you're suffering through uh, a degree and really trying your best just to like pass these courses and that and you don't get any sympathy it's really tough and so yeah attitude to students is the normal like looking down on you thinking you're a piece of shit kind of attitude but that's the attitude of most lecturers and most educators uh, at a tertiary level to undergrad students everywhere uh, all over the world and so yeah that could be improved but eh. <coughs> excuse me the senior lecturers are all very intelligent and uh, amazing to work with and when the class sizes become a lot smaller as they do in third and fourth year um, They're a lot more approachable. You can learn a lot more um, And they're really helpful and they're really interesting and yeah, especially in the electronics and electrical and computer engineering department There's only one or two assholes the rest are really cool intelligent amazing people who like I was really happy to and really privileged to study under so thanks a lot um, But yeah as a whole um, the degree was sorry. I'm just looking at my notes here um, there's a lot of help in the degree uh, if you go out and you search for it, obviously amongst peers and that and amongst um, the, the senior um, members of your degree or senior like postgrad students who are working in assistant lecturer positions. There's lots of opportunities to go and get help. Uh, there's lots of opportunities to go and um, attend tutorials, attend practicals, get one-on-one -on -one help. So yeah, there's a lot of help in the degree. You just really have to work for it. Um, I was going to say, um, I do believe the Tux engineering faculty, at least for the engineering a computer and electrical department is the biggest in the country and the highest rated according to that QS world rankings. Not that I believe in those rankings so much because they rate like uh, paper citations and then like international students like the most highly amongst all the criteria, not like how good is your actual degree, how uh, much knowledge do you gain and can you use in the workforce one day. So I, I don't really believe in that, but I think for what it's worth, tax is 
the highest rated engineering school in the country and definitely the largest and highest rated electrical, um, computer and electronic department. So yeah, it's a, it's a huge faculty. There's so many facilities, you know, all, all around campus and that the amount of um, machinery, equipment and uh, money that goes into uh, an engineer's education is, is really good and it's a, good, it's a great place to get an engineering education. Tux is awesome as well. A student life you can't go wrong with. Like obviously if you want to go get drunk and that's the easiest place to be. But um, if you're going to university for a party lifestyle, you're going for the wrong reason. But in the meantime, while you're there at Tux, the student life is great. Um, Hatfield is awesome. The reses are great. The apartment blocks and that around Hatfield are really nice. You'll have an amazing time if you go there. Um, so yeah, as with regards to job opportunities, post degree, as I mentioned earlier, most computer engineers go and work in software engineering because it's just where the cash is these days. But you can also work in embedded applications. You can learn anything really. As I said right at the beginning of the degree, uh, this degree has given me the confidence and ability to really go out and Google anything myself and learn it, whether it be advanced orbital mechanics or nuclear physics. I feel like there's nothing I couldn't learn right now and couldn't wrap my head around after enough attempts of study, which was not the case years ago, like in matric and in first year. I did not have that critical thinking, problem solving skills, ability to ram through a problem until I solve it, that I do now as a result of doing years of practicals, years of report writing, years of complicated mathematical things that are way above my pedig pedigree that I really don't understand. Um, and so yeah, in that regard, I think it really was worth it. And I would encourage anyone else to go and get a computer engineering degree. Uh, the way AI and the way software engineering is going, we're all gonna need to become some kind of engineer in the future if we have any hope of keeping up with the machines and with um, you know just using all the technology and the advanced uh, machines that are gonna be available for use in the future. And so I'm looking forward to being a part of the kind of workforce that shapes that future and shapes those uh, technologies. So yeah, would really recommend computer engineering at Tux. It'll be long, it'll be difficult, you'll probably take extra years to do it, um, but it's really worth it. And yeah, this is like the last video I'll ever, I'll ever probably make about university, because um, I'm done. Well, now I'll make a, oh, I guess I'll make a video about graduation, so I've got that to look forward to, but this is the last video I'll make talking about the content of university. I uh, shaped my whole YouTube channel around going to university and around uh, the Tux engineering lifestyle and experience. And so I really hope you've enjoyed watching it. If you want to know anything more specific about the degree, hit me up in the comments or on social media or go watch one of the like 350, I think it's close to 400 plus videos now um, that I have about computer engineering and I have about Tux. Um, it was a good experience and uh, you know something I'll always remember and always treasure. The friends I made there are going to be friends for life and yeah, great skills. I'm going away this month and then when I get back from the trip, I'll start looking for a job because I guess I'm not unemployed yet. Only when varsity starts will I be technically unemployed because right now I'm just on my student holiday. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be unemployed soon. So I'm going to get that software engineering job. going to try to start that startup this year. The world's your oyster when you've got a comp -eng degree. And um, yeah, really looking forward to bringing you along for the ride. Thanks for watching this super long video. I hope it gave you like a complete insight into the experience of computer engineering at Tux. Um, I haven't inserted any other videos in that from the degree here because I'm just too lazy to do that. But um, go back and watch all the videos and you'll see exactly what the experience was like. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you later. Bye.